Okay, what would you do, Greg, with the Perth Wildcats? Because currently, what they have, yes, they might they might squeak into the playoffs at the moment. They might, yeah, might make some noise there, but they don't look they. No, they're they definitely no not winning. No, a they're not the championship moment. contenders no. at all. And I think if you're looking, uh, what do you expect from a Wildcats team that they have to be championship <laughs> contenders? I think, yeah, if you're going, oh, I hope we we float into six, so then we play in a playing yep. tournament. I, f- you know. That just shows your culture. Like, I feel like that's shifted. So, I would, you know, like, for me, and, and when you're saying you're pulling the trigger, like, you're looking at near, it's nearly coming up to the halfway mark of the year. Um, what, they're five and six. So, 20, what, 14 games is a halfway mark. And so, this is a pretty pivotal piece here. And it's funny you sort of say, obviously, it shows them, like, this is a really critical time. But yep. it's funny. They go to a Brisbane team that's uh, under siege um, who's just been pantsed. Um, and so go against them which is sometimes always it can go both ways and I and I query and I will obviously speak about Brisbane um, per the run sheet but you know there and then you go to New Zealand um, who are obviously the hottest team at the moment and really show what can be done and so if they win they go 2-0 they, like they can really change the season around now yeah. if they go 1-1 one and one, I still think you have to go like it's expected to win Brisbane and New Zealand and it's, it's a ro- tough road trip for sure mm. Now, if they go 0 and 2, then it's like you're going all hell for lever and and you're blowing that team up. And I think they they need to because I don't think even if they win 2 and 0, I still don't think yet that might change the way they're going up. But the way that they're going right now, I don't think that's a championship winning team in terms of a best of five series. And why I say that, here's where I would make some changes. Um, I think uh, responsibility is uh, going on a lot of players who are who are underperforming currently. Um, yep. And so two of those ones, I'd say Brady Manick and, and Thomas. Um, yep. Now, yep, they're imports and there's some clear deficiencies. Um, you know, I look at who would be perfect is Brantley from New Zealand, right? Like absolute beast, uh, pick and roll sort of specialist in terms of roll into the hoop, uh, rim presence and a defensive guy. I would... Uh, potentially, well, I'd get rid of those two guys and combine their salaries to try and get uh, just a legit five man. See the, who's available. If if there is someone available, I'm not just trying to get a guy like I don't, like a lead that's at Melbourne United and who's like okay, could he be good? I'd you, you need a certain like if you had a Miles Plumley sort of guy who apparently is just he is. I, around I, I spoke to he's he's committed to playing in our Masters comp in Adelaide next year in October. So. Great. um now, I don't know if he's in game shape because he messaged the group at 5.30 in the morning <laughs> saying, I'm at the hospital with one of my mates who fell into a fire pit. So that just shows his current <laughs> okay. state. So maybe we don't go for a Miles Pomley. But someone of that stature, you know what I mean, that, um, you know, a Sean Long, a guy where he's going to be an offensive threat and, and do that, you're losing two roster spots there, obviously, and then I'm elevating LT into the four. Yep. Um, I love what Jesse's bringing, but for a guy that's my best mate, but it's 36, 37, like, and it was a really good sort of thing. John really sort of said, that's my safety net. That's like my 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 blanket, knowing what I'm going to get Break him. the glass. Yeah, of, but yeah. like, he's playing major minutes, like yep. early in the year. Like you you want him to, 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 to play it out. Um, I think this is at the point, and I've spoken about it before, mentioned it in the past. LT is at this critical point in his, like, what what is he doing? Yeah. And so I think, uh, yep, in him to play in the NBA, is he going to be a four-man? No, nah, more likely not. Um, but in this league, and this is what he's uh, doing currently, I'd be, if I was the coaching staff, I'd be getting clips of Xavier Cooks, Mitch Creek, um, Keanu Pinder, uh, undersized guys who are in that position and, uh, and going, mate, uh, all three of those guys, bar Mitch Creek, is a, like an okay shooter, but not like a still a dead yeah. dead eye dick. Where I'm like, you know, like I'm still hedging my bets on him. Definitely uh, yeah. improve, but I'm going. How are they successful? Like, and that is straight rim running, grabbing the ball off the the rim, and, and just getting on the hoop. O boards, transition buckets. And he could do that. Fr- he absolutely can. can. But like right now, I just don't see that, and mm. so. My fear is like he's gone, I've made the NBA draft pick and um, look, if we don't have a good result, I'm out doing next year, I'm doing G League stuff and I'm doing that, I've got one foot out the door. That's my fear and I could be absolutely completely wrong. Um, 
And so for me, if that was what he's thinking, I'm like, hey, we need you to actually step up. I've got yep. to give you a bit of responsibility. I've got to put you in that in a position to succeed and to fail um, in a good way. And so him just doing that, like I just think that's where it goes. And so that would be my my drastic measure um, because I don't. Brady is absolutely like he's he's improved, but now I think like Thomas has regressed, and so I just think what you're getting in those two positions when you're looking across the league of having bona fide guys like Bryce is obviously at a level. I was looking at the statistics, and then you've got obviously uh, Todd Blanchfield's three points, I think, or two point five below his average, and shooting yep. percentages down. Mitch Norton, his shooting percentages down, um, and and points average. I think for Mitch. Uh, you know what? What's hurting him is like um, I would love for them for their defensive makeup to shift a little bit. Like if you watch back the games, I don't really see him guarding a man ninety four feet, right? Mm. Like terrorizing guy. I don't see him denying the ball. Um, you know, like these are like at the end of the day, like there's no doubt that the um, the, the 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 brand of Walcott's bus was changed. Yeah, no doubt. But John even said at the start of the season, like what wins championships, defense and rebounding, and there and then struggling in that. So I would have to go back into that. So mm. yeah, look, obviously a few things. I never like you know, being the person I am, I never like it, talking about people's jobs. But if you're in order for them to win a championship, and I think we can all agree here, like that's not a team that's going to win a championship currently. No, but no. I think the reality is they're just no matter what they do, they're not winning a championship this year. Sydney and New yeah. Zealand are just on a different level and. You, I'm always interested with the Luke Travers discussion because he's what is he, 20 years old or yep. 19 trying to find his foot playing the most minutes in a professional league for the first time in his career but he's not people are scouting him yeah but yeah. he's not on a team that's conducive to doing what he does and that's what well. I'd even be looking at if, you, if you're in a position to go we're not going to win a championship then you're touting him as going if he's going to be here is he going to be the face of the franchise and mm. what I mean by that because currently is he going to make the NBA the chances are going to be quite tough. Like, yeah, he got drafted, but... Uh, and I'm not being an arsehole here. Etienne Majok got drafted. No, the odds of him making the NBA right. are like 10%. So then I'm going right now, hey, we're giving you the keys. Like, because, yeah, absolutely, Bryce... Hopefully Bryce will be here for three to four to five, but you need a, a Robin to a Batman. Yeah. Um, and so here's, like... That's that Mitch Creek. Like, embrace that role. You know, like, be be the face, not only the franchise, be the face of the league, which I have no doubt in my mind Luke Travers has that capability. Like, he's a smart player, um, has the physical attributes at this level to dominate. His shot is consistent enough. Like, I, I wouldn't mind him missing a, a few more, but I just think that intent or, like, hunger in terms of going, like, he has to play, like... Um, if I if I don't play well, it's not I'm not going to be in the NBA. I don't have a contract, mm. um, and so I think forcing that and putting that that um yeah like making him a four man and saying hey because I think if you looked at when he was successful when everyone was like geez like Luke Travers this young kid was the year when Trev Gleason was here and they had a bunch of injuries and they made LT start like yeah. and they were starting him as a DP as a four man and people were like oh against him against Mitch Creek and he was performing yeah. like he was doing well um, he can still be a playmaker at the four I think like we're always in this notion like even like swing men and four men like it's changed like we don't have traditional fives like yeah um, yeah Brantley is that traditional five hence why I'm like they need to go back to that sort of position um I think that's what they've lacked, you know, like you haven't had a really dominant sort of Angus Brandt beast, you know, um, even Tom Jervis played that role perfectly as the five man. Um, like I love Majok um, in that setting. So, but again, like to have a bit of a, in, a defensive presence as well, a bit of a, a uh, change of shots and, and currently the Walkers don't have that. They don't. They really don't. Um, and like you said, they will have to make some changes if they do want to make any sort of noise. I mean, they've done it before. They brought um, they've br they've brought they've brought people in mid season, and that's turned their team yeah. around. It's happened, but doesn't happen very often. And and um, hard to bring a new guy in at the best of times, let alone a team that's struggling mm. and um, make a big change. 